RVs Gone Wild. RVs Gone Wild number 19. Hey everyone, here we are. I've been gone for a little while. I've been out camping. I got some RV videos coming up where I've been out in the wilds of BC. But right now, we're going to get right into the latest videos as I catch up on RV's Gone Wild number 19. We're going to jump straight into this one from Brian's and he sent in this tow dolly in action. Now, in the early videos I did, I didn't even know what a tow dolly was for a fifth wheel, but uh, I've explored them and now we've got one in action here. He caught one going down the highway. It seems fairly stable. It's an interesting way to turn your fifth wheel into a pull trailer. That's quite the different setup there. Yeah, it's fucking trailer though, I think. Yeah. Cool. It's like, you got the fifth wheel hooked up, just not. I've never seen that. Yeah. Well, it is a Chevy, it needs all help it can get. Yeah. Donald D wanted to share his camper setup. Here's a picture and a video of his ex military truck pulling a dolly, pulling an old Prowler fifth wheel camper. He's ready for the apocalypse. That's right. Always have your RVs ready for the apocalypse. Bob A sent this in to us. Unfortunately, this is a fifth wheel that got a crew cut, as he puts it. It was towing too fast while tired and distracted. I'm not exactly sure if this was his or if he just saw it, but either way, that's a rough one. It's one of the things I like about having a travel trailer versus a fifth wheel. It's got a lower profile, less chance of hitting an overpass or a tunnel or the, or the roof of something. Devin E sent these into us. It's just a bunch of random, really crazy RV setups. We've got this one where the fifth wheel is set up on top of, it looks like, uh, the minivan. I'm not sure if that's uh, just parked there or if that's how they're towing it. We've got another one where a motorhome is converted into a gooseneck trailer. I hope that front end is well welded. Another one, this seems like a trend, I'm seeing this more and more, where people are taking their, their RVs and once the transmission and engine is bad, they just turn them into trailers. And this is a mini van shed. This is this is definitely a unique uh, one. Uh, this Welcome to Tennessee is what it looks like. And, you know, props to those folks in Tennessee for thinking outside the box, I guess. And you got this cool old camper. Let's face it, back then, vehicles like that could take this kind of weight without any problems. Back when cars were built like trucks. Kelvin H. sent us in a picture of his Okanagan. This is a cab over style, you know, slide in camper. And the Okanagan is actually a local area here near me. In fact, uh, in the upcoming video where I go camping, one of the areas I go through is the Okanagan. So I always like to feature those. Nice ride, Kelvin. And Mark C sent us in this teardrop trailer. In fact, the very first RVing I did when I was a very little kid was in a teardrop camper that looked just like this. Jim in Illinois also sent us this one. He spotted this military style camper. I'm seeing more and more of these here in British Columbia, often coming over from Europe for an extended period of time, from Germany and other places. Rob wanted to share with us this limited production 2002 Stratus. It's a sleek, low profile design. Uh, some say it kind of looks like the space shuttle. It cruises comfortable at 100 miles an hour. You know that's against the law, right? He says it stops on a dime and gives you nine cents change. I have a feeling he really likes this RV. He said it's been dubbed the Corvette of RVs and it does well in high winds as well. Yeah, it's a nice ride. I haven't seen that on the road before. Rob from Oklahoma. He loves the channel and he watches all our videos. He says he's got a 2000 Ford here, an E350 that he converted to a camper van. It has solar, it's got a toilet and a sink with running water. He really likes to get out and boondock. If you don't know what boondocking is, that's where you go out into the woods or someplace with no hookups and you just live self-sufficient off your rig. I've done all kinds of videos on boondocking if you look them up on my channel. And uh, that's the way I like to roll as well whenever I can. You don't need to plug into anything, man. You just boondock. Stephanie wanted to share with us her 1984 Revcon Silver Prince. She doesn't have it anymore. She noticed that we had another RV we showed where somebody had taken one half of this type of trailer and attached it to another one. And so she wanted to show us hers. 
The coach was originally like $185,000. You know, these were high-end coaches in their day. She drove around the country with her daughter. She wrote me a nice long letter. I can't really go through it all here, but thanks, Stephanie, for the kind words. Thank you for the videos, and thanks for watching, everybody. Let's get on to the next one. David G sent us this video. This is from Europe, and this is definitely the largest trailer I've ever seen attached to a motorcycle. That motorcycle must be beefy. And that trailer must be light. Thanks for sending that in. And it's time for turducken. You all know what turducken is? Turducken is where you take a turkey and inside it you cook a duck. And inside the duck you cook the chicken. It tastes great, but it's a weird way to tow and you stack all that stuff on top of each other. This week I only have a few turduckens, but next week I got a big pile of them. Leah sent this in. This is a picture of her son's rig who wants all his toys when he goes on vacation, clearly. And Zach sent this in to us. His turducken is a 72 Mustang and Lightning McQueen golf cart being towed by his 2004 National Tropic T396. That's a whole lot of wheels going down the road. Take it slow, take it safe. And I spotted these turduckens on the Crawler Hauler Facebook page. These are wild. You know they build them bigger in Texas. And I know I normally have a lot more turduckens, but again, coming back from vacation, I haven't gone through them all. But what I did see on vacation, which was crazy, was some accidents. One of the things I did is I drove home on what's called the Crow's Nest Highway. You can imagine how it got its name. It goes up real high, up and down, up and down through the mountains. And we saw multiple trailer crashes. The first one we saw was a slide-in camper. It obviously had crashed with the truck. They'd already moved the truck, but they left the mangled mess of the camper there. I guess they're gonna have to do a recovery on that later. That made me slow down a little bit. I always take that road real slow, but once you see one of those accidents, you go just a little slower. And then just a little further down, we saw a tractor trailer rig completely flipped over. Again, they had already removed the cab, but removing those broken trailers is like a whole project. And so on that travel weekend, they just left it there with cones. And that's the kind of remote BC we're in. When that kind of crash happens, that stuff can sit there for days until they can finally get a crew out there to shut down the road and remove all that. I keep talking about the trip I just took. It was awesome, I got to ride on a ferry. I never took my RV trailer onto a ferry before. In fact, here's the whole road trip we just did in a 60 second montage, real quick. Or skip ahead if you wanna keep looking at other RVs. Again, a full video on that trip is gonna come out real soon. Make sure you stay tuned. And if you have a really cool video you wanna send in to me or a cool RV, send it to rvingwithjoe at gmail.com. I love it when you send them to me. I can't use them all. I'm getting lots and lots of them, but uh, I really enjoy going through them all. I read them all. I appreciate it. Let's get on to the next one. Al sent this to us. He enjoys our videos and wanted to send us a few interesting units. The first one is a 53 Chevy, the frame off restoration and a 70 something Airstream. Everyone was taking pictures of this one apparently. He really likes what this guy did. The second is just a slider turtle that decided to go underneath the front wheel of his RV to get out of the rain. He wanted to remind everyone, make sure you check under your RV for any creatures before you pull away. And the last one was a cute but scary modified pop-up. These were all in Northwest Florida in two different campgrounds. You gotta love Florida. It's the California of the East Coast. 
You know, we just hit 2 million views. People all around the world watch our channel. We love it. And one of our followers here out in England, Bernard B, sent us a picture of his RV. You'll notice the door is on the other side. And this is a, a nice, modest, small uh, English style uh, RV. The RVs over there are made a little different. They tend to make them a little lightweight, a little skinnier, uh, not quite as beefy as these uh, American or Australian style. I think he calls his van Polly Love, and he says he loves the show over there in England. So thanks again for watching. And Barbara sent us this one. This camper takes their solar seriously. And thanks to everyone for sending in their pictures. Again, I'm just getting back from uh, the, the long trip going through. RV's Gone Wild 20 is coming up right after this, and it's gonna have even more turducken. I've got all kinds of video in that one, so make sure you stay tuned. Check out number 20 when it comes out. Can you believe it, 20? That's a lot. And also stay tuned for my travel videos, which are coming up. Thanks, everyone.